Well, we're back. Last time we did one of these, we figured is probably before the pandemic. I'm Terry Byers, I'm a library assistant here at the Iowa City Public Library. And we're gonna look at some books that just recently came out that are on our new shelf. But eventually we'll go back and talk about stuff that came out in the pandemic. So the first, they always say start off a presentation with a joke or something. So the first couple books are actually funny books. The first one is Lies My Mother Told Me or Tall Tales from a Short Woman. And this is Melissa um, Rivers' book about her mother. And it is hilarious. Um, Melissa grew up under the shadow of Joan Rivers, if you don't know who her mother was. And if you don't know who Joan Rivers was, well, okay, educate yourself because she is a pioneer in the world of comedy for women and an absolutely funny, hilarious person too, or was. Um, a lot of anecdotes, a lot of situations that Joan got into that Melissa was involved in too. Talking a little bit about post-Joan after she passed. Um, stories about her son Cooper, the grandson Cooper, who if you watched any of Joe's reality shows, you knew who he was. He's in college now, now I feel old. Anyway, good book, fast to read if you're looking for something that's quick and it'll make you laugh out loud. I love that book. Another book, and a serious book, but about a very funny guy, Art Buchwald, who was a columnist. I remember when I was a kid and into my teens, his column ran in the Press Citizen, but he was based out of the Washington Post. A lot of stories about the middle 60s, 70s, 80s, a uh, gentleman who had a skewer on society, but was very funny. Um, lots of stories about the Kennedys and about LBJ and all of that era. He was, he was pretty um, important in terms of he said things with satire, and that's not done that much anymore because life gets kind of like satire right now. But it's a good book. It's also a very sobering book because it talks a little bit about his final years and about he went through major depressions and a lot of talk about that triangle of Mike Wallace, William, um, William, uh, anyway, one of the writers, and I'll think of it after I quit taping, and him were talking about different kinds of depression. And it's a really interesting story, too, about his battle with depression, William Siren who it was. Anyway, then f the last funny serious book is Delia Ephraim's um, book called Left on 10th Street. And this is about her life po post her sister, Nora, post her husband, who this is how the book starts off, but he dies. And then everything that happens before that. She is a very good writer. In fact, she got an Academy Award nomination for helping her um, co-writing um, You've Got Mail with her sister, Nora. And the Ephraim sisters are all writers. Their parents were screenwriters. And they're kind of Hollywood royalty, even though none of them live in Hollywood anymore since their parents passed. But it's a very sobering look at late life and what your expectations are and then what actually can happen. So I would recommend this highly. And it is sad in some parts, but it's also very, it's very positive and it's very poignant. And if you want to sit down for a weekend and read a book that I think is probably one of the best memoirs that has come out in the last 12 months, this is it. All right, so we went from funny, we're going to go to some serious stuff. This just recently came out. I just finished it. It's called Dinners with Ruth and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Nina Tiltenberg, who is a reporter, um, became friends. And they would take Ruth after, after her husband passed and before her husband passed. They would have her for dinner parties. And it was about the casual Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And it's a very interesting story. And it's also about Nina and her friends. And so you'll hear a lot of familiar names in this book. And it's a very nice book about people out of the public eye. and when you get to know people as real people, and I think she's, well, Nina is a good writer, so the book does come out very, very well in terms of her writing. Then we have um, a book about John F. Kennedy. Like, there's not enough. I have over 3,000 Kennedy books in my personal library. This has joined it. This is called, in, compar 
Incomparable Grace. And it really is a book about Kennedy that there's always, when you've read so many books about Kennedy, when something new strikes you, it's, it's a treasure. And this is very positive. It's um, a lot more about him as a person, him as a father, his, him as a husband, and John F. Kennedy's president. And a wonderful book. Um, again, I, it's probably after Dinners with Ruth and then the Ephron book, I would say this is, this is a really good, and it's a good read too, meaning it's going to go fast and it reads like a novel, which is the best kind of history to have. So, Incomparable Grace, story about John F. Kennedy. And they don't put out too many books about the Kennedys unless it's about fashion or something. And there's more depth to the Kennedys than that. Bit of a work. Enough said. If you don't know who he is, read the book. It, you'll learn who he is. Um, it's about, it's called We Got to Try, and it's about the frustration that he's felt running for office, but also the, the joy and the simplicity of the people that they just are trying to get what they need and they need to have a voice and how to get the voice. And it's also about his struggles with that and embracing our challenges. Um, demo it's really a, a demonstration about democracy and how to get your voice out there even when it seems like it's insurmount insurmountable. But that's been over work. And a lot of people don't like him, think he's maybe a little too liberal, maybe a little on the other side or the left side. but. He's articulate, and I find him to be very refreshing in the news cycle that we currently have. Bit of work. All right, so then we go from a galvanizing politician to an astronaut of all things. And this is Fred Hayes' story. And Fred Hayes, if you don't know him, was one of the Apollo 13 astronauts. He also flew in the shuttle. He also worked for NASA in terms of developing um, different processes and the shuttle was involved in that. I'm pretty sure he did go on the shuttle, but he got close to going on the shuttle. No, I think he did go on the shuttle. But it was more about Apollo 13. And if you don't know that story, there's a great movie about it, but from Ron, Ron Howard. And James Lovell also wrote a book um, probably about 20 years ago about Apollo 13. But it is truly a statement on her hero heroism. And the, the NASA crew. And that's what he talks about, is those people down on the ground who really brought them home and how privileged they were to fly for them and privileged to fly for the United States. And astronauts, I don't, I don't care what you say about the program or how much money it spends, astronauts are heroes because they explore places none of the rest of us are going to go. So Fred Hayes, it's called Never Panic Early, and it's really, that's kind of his theme for his life. But it's a good book. Um, I'll do a decorating book now. Ooh, decorating. Create your dream home on a budget. This has great ideas about using what you have, looking for things that you might not have but are available cheaply. It's also about decorating, and decorating is fun, but decorating, of course, is very subjective. Some people don't like you know, all white things or old things in with new things. But give it a try because there are some things that you, you might not know and you might learn from. And it's a very nice book. Again, with decorating books, there's a lot of pictures. So it's enjoyable too. So I like picture books from the time I was a child. Um, Anatomy of 50 more songs, 55 more songs. And this is Mark Myers. He wrote another book earlier about essential songs in rock and roll. This is also another set of essential songs. This goes all the way from Le Chic, The Freak, to um, Small Town by John Mellencamp. A couple of country songs are in here, well, several country songs, dance songs, um, post-punk, punk, The Talking Heads, Blondie, people like that. One of my favorite songs of all time, Joan Jett's Bad Reputation, is in here and how it talks about how all these songs galvanized or reflected or preceded events and times. And songs can really change the world. And I really like this book. It's a quick read. You don't have to sit down and read it from cover to cover. You can just open it anywhere and read about a song. And it's a, it's a really nice book. 
It's also a quick read. I, I recommend quick reads because sometimes you get bogged down. If you've ever read the Carol books about LBJ, you'll know what I'm talking about. You can get bogged down in minutia, but not here. Another singer from a long time ago who no one really thinks about anymore, but who was just as important as the person she's compared to, Deanna Durbin. And I know that my aunts and uncles and people knew who she was and talked about her, along with her friend, Judy Garland. Judy Garland sort of surpassed her, but Deanna Durbin was important as an influence and really was a bigger star when um, Judy Garland was a younger, younger girl and really um, had the country by the tail and enjoyable story. It's kind of a comparison of the two. And really, um, I think Deanna Durbin died about two years ago. So it's well needed to spotlight her as one of the people that was influential in that 1930s, 20s, 30s group that came up through the Hollywood ranks. So I would recommend the Deanna Durbin book. And then finally, my last book for today is a story about a family, a store, and a history. And that's Zabar. Zabars, I don't know if he, I'm pronouncing that right, because Zabars, I think it is. Um, prominent New York City. Um, if you have ever watched the Barefoot Contessa, you'll know Mr. Zabar because he comes on and brings all the bread to Ina's house sometimes during the show, and they had breakfast, and he's, he's on fairly often that I recognize the name when I looked at the book. This is about their store in New York, and it's about the family, and the history of the store, the history of the family. And it's, it's just a, one of those tales about a time that is almost gone by, even though the store is still there, but how it used to be done and how it's done today, how the family changed. It, it's a family-run business. It still is. Uh, cousins and nephews and grandsons are all running it and granddaughters. And very the history of America through a store. And I, I think this is a really nice book. It's really something that you can read and maybe you're going to research some more about this kind of history. This is a great kind of history, I think, because it's real life as opposed to what people tell you the history is. So, Zabars, or Zabars, and I, again, another big recommendation for me. Well, that's all I have for today, so I just want to thank you all for listening. Uh, join us again when we do this and look at for all of this great programs that are here on the channel. Thanks.